So let's work an example together. Um, let's say we want to find, what was the example in my head? I think I wanted to do the fifth roots of, and I'm going to give you an arbitrary complex number, somewhere else not nice and neat like Unity. Uh, let's go with, I'm going to be, I'm 90% sure this is what it is. I'll look it up in a second. Uh, this is a complex number somewhere else. Root. Yes, this is the one I want. Um, I want to find the fifth roots of this number. So I want you to, because I'm going to need to make some space, but I'll give you a minute to write this down if you're still catching up. Um, I want you to jot this down and think about how we're going to form an equation with our fifth roots in it if this is our particular complex number. I'll give you a clue. All of this working, except for the first line, is not in rectangular form. So the first thing you're going to have to do is get things in an appropriate shape to start doing this working, okay? I'll give you a minute, a minute or two head start, um, and then I'm gonna clear this off, and then we will have a go together, okay? Off you go. Okay, I can see some people have made a good start. For those of you who are like, mm, still not 100% confident, let me give you a bit of a nudge, okay? So we're looking at the fifth roots of negative root three plus i, which is given to you as it often will be in rectangular form. But rectangular form, kind of sucks for finding nth roots. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out what the modulus is, what the argument is, and then I can go into exponential form. So real quick, like you'll get to the point, you actually saw me doing this uh, live when I was trying to remember if I got this question, this particular number, right? Um, you'll get to the point where you're like, oh, I can visualize, especially because these same numbers to give you exact values will come up over and over again because we don't want to make it a pain for you. Um, you'll start to think, oh, I know where this number is, so I can quickly verify what my modulus or my argument should be. But until you get there, do yourself a favor. Draw yourself a tiny little argand diagram and uh, think about where this is going to be. Negative root 3, that takes you to the left of the, uh, of the complex plane because it's negative root 3 over here. Plus i takes you up further um, into the imaginary axis, but uh, this is 1 and this is 1.3. So here is where I would place uh, what did I call it? I'm calling it W, okay? Um, so if that's where W is, if you have a think about this triangle you create in here, this is our 1, 2, root 3 triangle, right? 1, 2, oops, wrong way around. 1, 2, and then root 3 on the bottom, right? So you're going to get pi on 6, pi on 3, and pi on 2 in this triangle. you just got to know which one is which, right? Um, this angle here is the one that's most relevant to me. What is the side? You can even see it on my messy diagram. Which angle is that? That's pi on 6. It's the smallest angle, right? You can even see that just because my scale is roughly close enough. If that angle is pi on 6, then the argument that I'm after is the supplement of that. It's 5 pi on 6. So I'm going to jot that down here. And I kind of sneakily already mentioned this without writing it. The hypotenuse is the modulus that I'm after. So that's going to be 2. Okay? So therefore, I can say uh, w equals 2e to the i 5 pi on 6. And so now I'm kind of ready to work out what my nth roots will be. I'm after the fifth roots, right? So I'm going to say, I don't just want this, I want like the five, uh, sorry, the four after this, right? So what I'm going to do to sort of minimize the amount of working that I'm going to put down, I'm going to find the first solution, what I called before z1. And then I'm going to use my, my sort of, the fact that I know they're going to be spaced around a circle with a particular circumference and just use that to find the rest of the solutions, okay? So I'm going to say z1 will be this thing raised to the power of a fifth. Do you agree with that? I'm, I'm looking for fifth roots, okay? So when you raise 2 to the power of a fifth, how would you write that? This is just a real number. This is it's the fifth root of 2, right? Is that okay? Which is not like, I mean, I, I've chosen numbers here for you so the numbers are small. You might have gotten like, say, 32 on a, a, a question which was trying to make things easy for you because that's the fifth power of 2. But here I'm just going to write the fifth root of 2. Then I come to the, the argument part, right? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to divide by 5. Oh, that's convenient. So I'm going to write i to the pi on 6 up here. There's my first solution because I've r divided this by 5. Okay. So there's my first solution. I need to put some kind of t connective tissue here to explain how I'm going to get from z1 to the other roots, z2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. So I'm going to say um, fifth roots, I need to include that, are on, I'm going to say, a circle of circumference fifth root of 2. Um, you can say that phrase, 
a circle of circumference fit through two, or you can say thereon the absolute value of z equals the fifth root of two. That's another way of saying this is the circle that has that circumference, right? And they are equally spaced. What would be the spacing in this case? You can have a look, I've already rubbed it off, but you can have a look at our generalized working before. We would say they're 2 pi on 5 in this case. 2 pi on n, where n is equal to 5. So I'm going to write 2 pi on 5 um, around the circumference. Okay, so this piece of connected tissue, it's really important. You don't want to just go to like the next working. It's like, where did this come from? Okay, as I work out Z2, 3, 4, and 5, um, I'm explaining how I'm going to change this and also how I'm going to keep it the same. So when I write Z2, for instance, because I know I'm on this same circle, what happens to this modulus for the next solution? <coughs> yeah, it's the same modulus. That's nice. Okay. But then you want to have to think about the next solution. It's going to be um, e to the i. My angle is going to change. My argument will change. Right? You're still going to start here, but pi on 6, you're going to add on what my spacing is, which in this case is 2 pi on 5. Okay? Now at this point, um, I'm very happy for you to just reach for your calculator. Uh, pi on 6 plus 2 pi on 5 is not the main thing we want you to focus on in this question. So if you want to reach for uh, your calculator, don't worry about the pi's obviously. Put in a sixth plus 2 fifths. What do you get? 17, 17 pi on 30 is what I remember getting when I was working this out yes. earlier. 17 pi on 30. Uh, you should verify that and you're like, oh yeah, denominator looks good. That's fine. Um, I've got my next one, z3. I'm just going to go another 2 pi on 5, right? So it'll be fifth root of 2 out the front, e to the i, same starter, but I'm going to go further, right? Uh, and calculator should hand you another answer. From memory, it's 29 pi. OK, now at this point, I just want us to pause. Um, you're maybe settling in. What did I say? 29. Maybe settling into autopilot. Like, this is great. Like, it's so, um, it's so well set up for us, the theory of it, that you can just keep going. You can go 6 pi and 5, and then 8 pi and 5, and then you'd be done. But just briefly, what I'd like us to do, even though it's not required, um, is can we just quickly draw where these are on an argon diagram? Because this will be helpful for us in a second. If we draw, we're eventually going to get all five of the fifth roots. If we draw this on, you'll notice uh, there's some geometry you can take advantage of here. Okay, so I'm going to draw my imaginary and real axis. Mm. Hold on to this one. Now my first solution, um, or sorry, rather all my solutions, I know are going to lie on the circumference of this particular circle here. So just to make things easier for myself, I'm going to put that circle onto here so all my solutions can live there. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and, in fact, I'm going to use this color. I'm going to go around. Here's my, here's my circle. Okay? And uh, its circumference, or its radius rather, will be the fifth root of 2. So all my solutions will sit somewhere on this circle. Okay? And then from here, I just need to know the appropriate angles. I've already got three of my solutions, so they shouldn't be too hard to plot. I'm going to place pi on 6 about there. So this is z1. Uh, this one here is z2, 17 pi on 30. Now, I just want to roughly get a sense of where that is. Um, it's a little bit close to 15 pi on 30, right? just a bit further than 15 pi on 30. Now, the reason why I think 15 pi on 30, like where did that number come from is, what does 15 pi on 30 simplify to? Oh. Pi on 2, and I know exactly where that is. Here's pi on 2. So if this is 15 pi on 30, 17 pi on 30 is just a little bit further anti-clockwise. Do you agree with that? So I'm going to place that roughly here. There's my z2. And then my, um, my third solution, 29 pi on 30. This is very close to 30 pi on 30. Where is 30 pi on 30 on my argon diagram? It's at pi, isn't it? Right? 30 pi on 30 is pi. So I'm just short of that. There's ish 29 pi on 30. So there's my z3. So the way we've gotten our solutions so far is we got our first one by using exponential form. And then we got our others just by adding 2 pi on 5 every time. Does that make sense? And so we've arrived at our third solution so far. Now you can already see, like we're going to get this um, a regular, penta uh, regular, yeah, a regular pentagon. Um, I was going to say regular polygon of five sides and realize I have a name for those. Okay? I'm going to get my regular pentagon shortly. You can see I'm missing solutions down the bottom here. 
But at this point, I recognize there's a better way to do this than to keep going anti-clockwise. If I kept going anti-clockwise, I'd still get a Z4 and a Z5. It's fine. Okay? But your angle is going to be past pi, right? So it's going to be a non-principal argument. That's OK. You can change it into a principal argument. But why not just go for a, non sorry, go for a principal argument in the first place? Rather than continue going around anti-clockwise, what if I were to go around clockwise? I'll still get these same solutions. It's just I can skip one step of convert into a principal argument. Okay? So I'm anticipating, just looking at my diagram, right? Um, I'm anticipating a solution around here and a solution around here. This will be my Z4 and my Z5. Um, the difference will be instead of adding 2 pi on 5, to go clockwise I should subtract. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you a nudge, right? My Z4 and my Z5, I'm still going to start from my first solution, uh, which in this case was fifth root of 2 e to the i pi on 6, fifth root of 2 e to the i pi on 6, but I'll subtract 2 pi on 5 to get this one, and then I'll subtract 4 pi on 5 to get the very last one. So that gives me this. Can you go ahead and... Uh, Work out what those are, and then we'll um, put them on the board together. All right, so we're, uh, we're pretty much there, right? Let me, uh, let me tie this up in a neat bow in two ways. For starters, here's one I prepared earlier. So this is obviously a lot neater than the one um, I did kind of in a hurry here. But you could already know you were going to get roughly the right thing because you can see my regular pentagon forming there. Um, and you can also see how I got the first solution went to two more and then went to the last two going in different directions. Okay? Now I should point out, um, I sort of glossed over something real quick here and um, <laughs> lessons for why you should not skip lines of working. Uh, this is, you can see, like we've got you know, in our first question, the focus is on complex numbers, but we had to use our trig identities. And here, we're still focusing on complex numbers, the complex plane, but I sort of snuck in um, index laws into here without really going into detail of why. So let me just put in one intervening line to hopefully make clear, even though it doesn't look obvious, right? We're doing one thing to everything here, right? So let me write from W, right? If I write W to the power of a fifth, and maybe um, for those of you who've already put this working down, just like sneak it in on the side, just like I am, so you can really clearly get where this first solution is coming from. I'm just going to write everything in here. And I'm going to raise that to the power of fifth. Okay? So I did a lot of this index law stuff that I'm about to write here kind of in the background because we get familiar with them. right? But for those of you who are like kind of, mm, I'm not quite there, you've got two numbers here, a product being raised to a power, which is the same as taking each part of the product, each factor, and raising them to that same power independently. So I could say that's to the power of fifth. And then take a breath e to the i 5 pi on 6 to the power of a fifth. So there's my two separate factors, both being raised to the same power. But then because I've got two somewhat different looking things here, I can write them somewhat differently. right? So this guy here, by our definition of what fractional indices means, is the fifth root of 2. So that's where I got it from. But here, um, I can actually just use the fact that, in another color here, um, I've got these powers multiplying by each other, right? So the 5 pi on 6 multiplied by a fifth, that's what cancels my 5s and leaves me with that pi on 6 over there. So that's what lands me on this spot. Um, it is worth putting, like if you're a person who's like, mm, I can see this is something where my brain had to take that extra step because I'm less familiar with this, then, then write the extra steps. It's totally fine. Um, and we'll sort of give you a spot where if something goes wrong down the bottom, like you try and plot these, you're like, that doesn't look like a regular pentagon. Or they're all like grouped up in one spot because you've got the wrong angles. This is the spot you can go back and look at to find your own error. And that's obviously super important. Okay.